I'm going to speak about a television show that takes place in a hospital where young men and women of different races, mostly white, must deal with the complications of being on their own in a world outside of their schooling. Not Grey's Anatomy, but the Bill Lawrence brainchild scrubs. It doesn't look right. What? What is it? You have a penis. Or, that's what I think it is. It's a penis. There's hookups, deaths, and the occasional guest star in this medical dramedy about the career journey of Dr. John J.D. Dorian, a sensitive and imaginative doctor, and his colleagues. His best friends, Dr. Elliot Reed, a neurotic doctor continually trying to prove herself. Yes, uh, but not about this. We're doctors. Uh, we like to give out health tips. You should wear sunscreen, even with your dark complexion. Nice save. We did it. We put up the sign. Dr. Christopher Turk, cocky surgeon. Stable condition. Time to day. And Nurse Carla Espinosa, a helpful guide for JD and his years at Sacred Heart Hospital. Now that you're here, it doesn't matter what crap you have in your past. All that matters is that you leave it there. I can't do this all on my own. No, I know I'm no Superman. The narrative of the show follows a three-act structure in which the A story pushes JD as the protagonist towards a self-revelation about him socially or in his career. There's a good chance I'm gonna kill someone. In the B story, he acts to promote a change in other characters. Crying. She's ruining it for me. Oh. Lady, stop crying! The first act of the show is about setting up and introducing the normal world, the universe in which the show takes place, and the characters that will be part of this narrative. From the pilot episode of the series, My First Day, we are introduced to JD through his voiceover narration. Since I was a kid, I've been able to sleep through anything. Storms, sirens, you name it. Last night I didn't sleep. It says who he is, and explains why he's doing something goofy. You see, today isn't just any other day. It's my first day. I'm the man. Next, we follow him to work, and as he walks in, the voiceover continues and reveals that he is unprepared for work. And four years of pre-med, four years of med school, and tons of unpaid loans have made me realize one thing. Good. Could you go drop an NG tube on the patient in 234 and call the attending if the lavage is positive? I don't know, Jack. And in other episodes, whatever, whoever happens to be waiting for him at the hospital as obstacles for his narrative. You ever notice how quickly some people make an impression? I'm a tool. I'm a tool, I'm a tool, 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 an unbelievably annoying tool. Yeah. The reveal to himself and the viewer of a prior unknown shows JD is not omniscient so that the audience can experience the plot as he does. The initial goal is also set up this way. For the first episode, we have the goal being JD becoming comfortable with his job. With that out of the way, JD can begin his pursuit of said goal. Continuing, we will change our focus to the season five episode, My Way Home, where the goal is almost explicitly stated in the title. It's for JD to get back home on his day off work. Why would I have your intern call you in on one of your very precious days off for something so gosh darn trivial? But the real question ought to be, why when you were an intern did you call me in time after time after time after time? What should make for an easy goal is conflicted by the antagonist. In this case, co-workers putting more and more work onto JD. Keith, you've got to stop paging me for totally unimportant things. Oh. That man's chest cavity is completely open. I can see his heart beating. We're also introduced to the B story as these conflicts arrive, with Turks being insecure about the prospect of fatherhood. As we follow JD's story, we will also get glimpses into trick stories he learns from the father of a brain dead patient to be honest with himself and others. Moving on to another episode, season 6 is my musical. As we look towards the third act of a Scrubs episode, the A and B stories meet at the climax of the action. Why are you singing? Wait, why am I singing? This episode deals with a patient who hears the world as a musical. This is the B story she tries to get others to help her figure out whether she's just crazy or if there's something wrong. Am I still singing? Singing like a bird. Meanwhile, in the A story, JD is trying to deal being without a home as his current roommate, Elliot, is moving to a new apartment and a change he doesn't want. How am I supposed to tell him that he's not moving to? Oh my god! He doesn't have a clue. I'm crazy! The resolution of the A story, JD telling Elliot their friendship will be okay, pushes forward into a musical number that ends with the cast informing the patient they will make sure she's okay. Once surgery has been completed on her, JD's voiceover returns from the beginning of the show to wrap up the events of the episode, and the understanding that some changes must be made. 
but that you may miss whatever has changed anyway. In musicals, there's always a happy ending, but in life, sometimes when you get what you want, you end up missing what you left behind. In all three episodes, the A-plot follows JT as he moves towards a goal that will benefit him and turn him to a more rounded character, whether to be more comfortable at work, relax home for a change, and become okay with the way things you don't want to change do. For the B-plot, the character shuttling undergoes a significant change with themselves. In Turk's case, in my way home, becoming more honest with himself, and for the patient of my musical, is finally hearing the world in a natural, but a less fantastical way. 